And Donald Trump become even more powerful after the election if he characterizes himself as a martyr and the last champion of the far right? Maybe, maybe not. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. In Los Angeles. Hey, Kenyatta, what's on your mind today? Well, Mr. Hartman, I want to tell you that I want to bring a little sobriety uh, to uh, the understandable uh, reverie in the country, I guess. Uh, not reverie, but you know what I mean. I mean, uh, there are those of us on a Elation. certain side of this. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, okay. You said that, I didn't. Um, but I do want to want to say this, that uh, it was very striking to me yesterday when uh, Mr. Trump uh, did his White House briefing, the White House uh, briefing room. Um, I am a person that has, for all kinds of reasons, survival and all other things, uh, looked at closely at body language my whole life. And I saw a broken man. His shoulders yeah. were drooping. He did not have uh, the starch in his shorts that he normally uh, has. There wasn't the bluster. And it's really weird, Tom. I uh, Not that I felt sorry for him at all, because I can't, you know, I, 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 I mean, I, I, I absolutely despise him and what he stands for. But I've always said, and I've said in uh, my columns over the years, that, uh, Donald Trump is a reflection of this of, of this society. He is. And uh, he is not the cause of it. He is a reflection. And yeah. I think that when I saw that broken man yesterday, I saw uh, the society at large. I think that that this country, the populace, I think we're broken. I think that in the last few months, the things that this country have has gone through, cataclysmic things, pandemic, economic collapse, impeachment, uh, this continued controversy with the election, I really think it was just so striking to me. Uh, and even though I'm very, uh, even though I'm nonpartisan and very happy that uh, at least his personage will be gone, my concern is that he may become a martyr, Tom, because there was no repudiation of Donald Trump. I mean, we're three days after the fact, still it was razor thin margins. So that shows a deeply divided country. And with at least a 50 50 split, that agrees with his racist, sexist rhetoric. Uh, it's very possible that Donald Trump can become more powerful after he leaves the White House as a martyr. Uh, than he was before, and I think that that's very disconcerting. Sorry to be a downer on your audience. Well, he may he may have. Uh, I don't even think he'll have a larger, uh, you know, media platform. You can't beat being president of the United States in terms of being able to spread your message around. I, you know, I think he's going to be relegated to the to the right wing fringe, to the to the margins of society. Um, I'm sure he'll continue yelping and whelping, but I think that. Uh, I think he's toast. <laughs> Ken, yeah, I'm a little more optimistic about well, this. And I think that I, it's going to be a I sobering moment for a lot of people. I do too, Tom. But uh, what, I want, what I'm getting at is that I want what I'm, you know, the Republican Party has not repudiated him. Not yet. They, give you know, give they him a haven't. few weeks. Yeah, yeah give them a well, few that's weeks. true. They are They're, politicians. You know, <laughs> And they're and they're still, you know, I, you know, I, I we're, we're starting to see a few of them, you know, distance themselves. Roy Blunt, you know, the the senator from Missouri came out and said, well, you know, you don't, you've got to have cut all the votes. You know, that's how we do it in America. You know, ba basically giving the back of the hand to Donald Trump. I think we're going to see more. Can I ask more you a quick question? Yeah, go for it. I, I want to ask you a quick question. You may recall that in 2008, when uh, uh, George uh, W. Bush left the White House the day of the inauguration. And when he left and Marine One was there, there was kind of this applause that he left uh, because he had taken, compared to Donald Trump, he had taken the country through nothing. But uh, I was wondering if you could maybe wax, uh, and I know my time's up, uh, if, if you could tell me what you think that day is going to look like when Donald Trump takes his sorry bronze Agent Orange butt 
out of Washington for the last time, <laughs> officially. It's, it's, it's going to be the day that Louise and I break out a bottle of champagne. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, my theory, and I've, I, you know, I've, I've said this on the air a few times, is that he's probably going to resign a week before he leaves so that Mike Pence can pardon him and the entire Trump crime family without, you know, the issue of can a guy self-pardon going to the Supreme Court. Now, I might be wrong on that, but tax fraud is serious stuff. They put John Dillinger in, day, in prison for, for tax fraud. And uh, you know, he's so clearly and obviously guilty of it. New York State will probably still be coming after him, and that's why I think he may well leave the country. I think he's a serious flight risk. But you know, <laughs> you got 15 seconds. What do you think? I think you. I think you're hilarious and correct. Well, you know, keep in mind his wife and his son both have Slovenian citizenship or Slovakian. Yeah. I forget which country they're from, yeah. Slovenia or Slovakia. Um, yeah. And so, you know, maybe he's got a nest all feathered someplace else. I don't know. Kenyatta, great to hear from you. It's been a while. Thanks for calling in.